Hey, what's up treasure hunters? So I know I've been pretty bad about posting sales videos. I missed last month and I'd like to do these weekly, but I don't always sell a whole lot of volume. It's more higher priced items or higher profit items. So I'm going to try to start posting some sales videos weekly, especially now that my twins are in kindergarten. I'll have a little bit more quiet time to make some videos without everybody hearing the rambling footsteps above me. So uh, if you want to see what I sold and the profit that I made, get some tips on, you know, what caught my eye about each item, stay tuned. Also, this is the video where you get to enter to win that Steuben glass bowl. So I have to do is like and share the video on Facebook. You'll be automatically entered. And if your name's chosen, you just have to email me your shipping information and I'll send it out to you free of charge. So here we go with some of the sales that I've had. I'm not going to go into every one, but these are some of the more profitable sales that I've had. The first one here is this pair of Scandinavian lily candle holders. I believe they're either bronze or brass. Um, I put brass in here. I'm pretty sure they were brass, but they have a bronze type color. Here they are listed. You can see they're really nice. I picked up this pair for, I think, $4.99 at a Savers. And the thing that I noticed right away was they're very well made and they're pretty unique they had a really nice style to them they didn't look cheaply made and then when i flipped it over here you can see the stamp and these were done by ivar and i'm not even something alenius bjork so i did a quick search of this Estad metal found this is his signature mark here and it said made in sweden so i knew they had to be definitely worthwhile for a $4.99 purchase. You can see each individual one and they had a nice patina to them. So I ended up selling the pair of these for $150 bucks, uh, free shipping. Here's the next item that I sold and this was done by William Henry Chandler and it is not signed but his work is very recognizable. He did a lot of these pastel painting landscapes. I could tell that this was obviously old just due to the painting style and you could see some of the paint isn't as clear as modern day painting would be and then when I saw the back obviously too the way it is put in here I knew it was pretty pretty old and then I posted this on a Facebook group and a couple people said yeah that's William Henry Chandler I actually picked two of these up. Uh, they were $9.99 each at a Savers store. And this one I sold for $175 with free shipping. So the next sale I had in uh, July was this advertising. It's a bronze coated paperweight by the Falzer Brothers Meat Company. And this was made in the 50s. And some of this advertising stuff is actually pretty collectible. But here you can see the PB for the Falter Brothers stamped here on the steer. I, I think I paid like 2 or $3 for this. And I was more interested just, I mean, because it's a, it's a pretty cool paperweight. And I was interested to see what this PB meant on here. And I sold this one for $60, and obviously since it's on Etsy, for free shipping. So the next notable sale that I had on my Etsy store in July was this Kyoshi Nagai woodblock print. And it also came with a certificate of authenticity, and it was signed in the bottom in pencil. So this was pretty unique and cool piece, and... Like I always do, um, especially when it's titled 
handwritten and titled and then signed here and it's from the set in like 71 and then on the back you know you see the certificate of authenticity that's always a real good giveaway that the piece probably has some value to it this one i think i paid it was pretty cheap i think i paid like five or six dollars for it at a goodwill and this was a while ago and i actually held on to this because i wasn't really sure if i wanted to list it here or sell it uh through an auction house but i just ended up listing it and i think i had it listed for maybe 275 dollars and i ended up somebody contacted me and asked if i would take 200 and i agreed and they even gave me a five-star review so thank you very much for that and of course that uh 200 included shipping but it didn't really go far and it wasn't that i think it was like 20 bucks so that was a very nice profitable item here so the next piece here that i sold was this limited edition it's a hand colored print uh, by francis greenberg and there's only a hundred of them i only paid like two dollars for this and i got this a long time ago when i first started doing this uh, but you can see hand colored series of a hundred titled kitchen it's got a real you know folk art feel to it and on the back here has some information about francis greenberg and seeing that I only it was only two dollars and this was extremely easy to ship because uh it's only 11 by 11 so and you know it's just a wood frame so it wasn't very heavy at all and i sold this one for 40 dollars, and i believe i sold it to somebody in ohio so shipping was next to nothing so that was just uh not a huge profitable item, but definitely, you know, worth the time. So the next item that I made a good profit on is, uh, and this was in a previous video of mine of uh, my thrift store finds, but this is the Iki Masumoto uh, signed blue heron print here. And I got this for, I don't remember, like five or six bucks or something. But it had the artist stamp here and a hand signature. And down here, name. And it's this special edition, 1985. So uh, this one definitely, like I said in the last video where this appeared, it definitely jumped out at me. I sold this one for, I had it listed for 300 but I was running the 15% off sale, so... The final price ended up being 255 and um, shipping on this was probably around, I would think, like $30 or something just due to the size, but definitely a good uh, find here. So the next item here, and I'm showing this one because it's a bit different than, you know, just art or pottery, uh, but this was a really cool very thin but very well made wood vase and it looks i mean it looks pretty fragile but it actually did have a little bit of strength to it but these cutouts were really cool kind of reminded me of like a giraffe or something and i got this for two dollars at a goodwill and on the bottom it is signed badger paws uh whoever i could never figure out who the artist was i couldn't find any other work but this is a really cool, cool vase, and I ended up selling this for $50, and the buyer gave me a, also a five-star review, which is great. I, um, I really like when people are real happy with their purchases here, so uh, that's always a good thing. So this next piece here I sold, and this was sold at the end of August, and I'm not, again, I'm not going through all of my sales but these are just the more noticeable ones or ones that gave me uh, some really good profits uh, this is obviously a JFK sculpture but this is a remake of an original sculpture by a Robert Burks um, which was done in 1922 this was done by Alva studio who they make a lot of remakes of famous sculptures and they make it out of this composite they call alva stone 
but I picked this up for five bucks at a Goodwill and it was in super good condition on a marble base. And on the bottom it has its this New York sticker here. But that was definitely something that immediately caught my eye. And usually I don't buy too many replica sculptures that are made from composite, but I did a quick search and the profit potential on this Alva Studio sculptures was actually pretty good. So I picked it up and I sold this one for a hundred bucks. So the next item I sold here was this antique Royal Dalton Birds of Paradise tea set. And I picked this whole set up at a Salvation Army for $5.99. And, the, you know, there was no chips or cracks or anything, which is the biggest thing you have to look for with these. I mean, they're not, you know, there is some crazing with all the pieces, but these were made, you know, in the very early 1900s. So uh, they're all hand painted and have the Royal Dalton stamp here on the bottom. And this is a pretty collectible style or, you know, um, I don't know what to, really what to call it, but everything is in really good condition. I listed the whole set, obviously, because, you know, it's much easier to sell as a set and you can make more money doing that than listing each piece individually. And I sold the whole set for 150 bucks. So this next piece I sold, I have actually had for quite a while. I picked this up at a Savers for five bucks. I had it listed, I think I started maybe around like 350 or something and then just kept whittling my way down because I saw some similar items and this was, you know, 14 inches wide. So it was pretty large and it's really well made. And this is a alabaster car, like hand carved dish. And here you can see it's got some, uh, it's got a real natural feel to it. I had this listed across a couple sites and it actually had a lot of interest from people, but no one ever pulled the trigger and bought it. But I ended up selling it for 200 here on my Etsy store. So this next sale I had when I first picked it up, I got it at a Goodwill. It was only two bucks and I wasn't exactly sure what it was. And it's very small, but this is actually, they call it a go to bed match Vesta holder. So the little log here has a little hole in the top that you can light a match back when they didn't have electricity or whatever in all the homes. You'd light a match um, while you were going to bed and it would give you a little bit of light and then the match would burn down and it would just extinguish itself. Then you would open the bear's head and that would where you would store all the different matches. It was kind of like a safety thing so you didn't burn your house down. This is made of brass. And when I first saw it, I thought it was pretty cool. I wasn't exactly sure what it did, but I knew it had to be some kind of holder because, you know, if the head flipped up and just doing, you know, a couple of quick searches, I found out exactly how it was used. And another giveaway here that it was old and not a reproduction um, are these two screws on the bottom. Any reproduction is going to have a Phillips head screw on the bottom, not these older flathead screws. Picked this up for $2 and ended up, and there was some kind of marking here, but I couldn't really make it out. I sold this for hundred bucks. Well, that's what I had it listed for. And then it was during the Labor Day sale. So it was 20 bucks off. So I sold it for 80. And another five star review, which is again, awesome. So this last piece I'm gonna show you from my Etsy sales is this Guido Gagliardi watercolor painting of these five older gentlemen on this bench. And this is dated 1976 and signed here in pencil down at the bottom. And I think I paid anywhere from probably four to six dollars for this. And I could tell obviously because you can even see some of the pencil marks still. Um, I knew it was an original and the name is pretty easy to read. So a quick search told me that 
his work was pretty valuable. The only thing that I questioned is this is a smaller piece with a lot of white space, so I didn't really know how valuable or how much I could make off of it, but for the price, obviously, it was a really good find. And then here you can see Portofino and then April 28th, 1974 here on the back. And then I ended up selling this one for 150 bucks through my Etsy store. All right, now I'm gonna move on to some of my eBay sales. Um, first one is this Antique Reed and Barton. It's a silver plate cake basket. And this was dated 1869, which obviously is very old. The cool thing about this is a lot of times on these ornate dishes like this or silver plate uh, metal dishes, especially with all the figures around there, a lot of times the figures are broken off or damaged or something, obviously, because they're so old. And this one, everything was intact. The only thing that was wrong with it was, you can see here, there's just some discoloration or marks on the base but being as old as it is that's not really a huge deal it is inscribed here late from henry here you can see like a close-up of some of the figures they look like soldiers around on the corners and then this bust in the middle and then what, what i really liked was uh on the handle there was this dog figure but here you can see patented in March on March 30th, 1869. And it's Reed and Barton. Here's another, the plate patented in 1868. But I picked this up at a Goodwill for only five bucks. It says sold for three fifty, but I actually took less money. I think I sold this for maybe two eighty five. That was definitely uh, cool find and this is another piece that I contemplated on trying to sell through an auction house but I decided I found some I didn't find any light exactly like this but I found some other cake baskets or cake plates that were pretty similar with the figures and stuff but they were damaged so I just priced it kind of in the middle and ended up getting a really good profit so a little bit ago I showed you that I was getting into some t-shirts. I ended up finding this is a 1990s Indazia International. I never heard of the brand. Uh, the graphics on it and really well done, uh, thick. The shirt itself was very thick. So I just did a quick search on the brand and found that the shirts were actually very valuable. And I think I got this for like $5.49 at a Goodwill. And obviously this is Albert Einstein. And then on the back too, uh, a lot of shirts only are one because it obviously costs more to print both sides of the shirt. But this also had a nice printing on the back, um, E equals MC squared. But they also had, uh, I saw a bunch of MC Escher shirts for sale from the same brand. You know, some of these shirts are selling as high as like, or listed as high as 250 bucks. I had mine listed for 125 and somebody offered me 75 for it. So I just took it. Um, I thought that was a fair price, especially seeing that I only paid like 550 for it. So this next piece uh, is a, it was done by Martha Lieber and she, I believe was an Ohio native. And I got this at a Goodwill for I think six bucks. And it was nicely framed. It's obviously very well done, uh, very detailed and crisp. A cool scene of some boats here on the shore and there's a seagull in the air. It's a little bit cloudy with some rocks in the back. I thought it was really cool. I like I like those rocks coming out of the water in the distance and the coloring was just awesome. And here's uh, her signature, M. Liebert. She wasn't very well known, I don't think, just given the, the nature of the picture and just how well it's done. I I think I did find a couple works from her, but I didn't find too much when I was researching. So I just threw this up for 300 and I think I actually sold this for like, I think they offered me 250 and I just, I took it obviously. So this is one that I kind of contemplated on keeping for myself, but when you get into that and start keeping stuff for yourself or, you know, keeping those treasures that can, you can go down a rabbit hole with that and end up with 
you know, a lot of things that you don't even have room for. So I just uh, sold it for 250. So this was one of my uh, better sales. And this happened a couple, maybe a month ago. I actually got two of these. They were both at a Goodwill, uh, framed in oak, like professionally framed. And John Ruthven did a lot of hunting stuff, wildlife. He was a, obviously a realism painter. And this is a limited edition lithograph. I believe it was out of 950. And he actually has on his website uh, an estimated value of all of his different paintings and all of his different prints and, uh, you know, how many were made of each print and everything. And um, this was done in, I believe, the early 90s or late 80s maybe even early 80s. This is Rummy, an English setter, and this is part of his Sporting Dog series. And if you see here, you can see just how detailed and realistic his work looks. And it is hand-signed, if I can bring this up. Yeah, so this is 909 out of 950. There's Rummy, the English setter. Sporting Dog series, plate two. And on the back, it had some information. And I got these, I believe they were 29 I got two of them. Uh, the other one I haven't sold yet, uh, which is actually more valuable than this one. The value on his website, I think, was around 900 And here's the certificate of registration for the piece. I was done in 81 Yeah, this piece, I paid 30 bucks for both of them. And I wasn't exactly sure if I was going to because they were large. I think they were just about 30 by 30. And once I looked up his work and especially that these were more sought after pieces, he did a lot of other like birds and ducks and stuff like that that weren't as valuable. Uh, but his sporting dog series, um, obviously lots of people out there love dogs. I love dogs. I have three dogs of my own. And, you know, anybody that hunts and has an English setter, you know, this would connect with very well. I know it says that I sold it for six fifty, but I ended up taking somebody offered me four fifty and they also lived in Ohio, so the shipping wasn't too bad. And uh I think it was only like thirty bucks or something. So I ended up taking that and plus that's the one difference between me selling on eBay and Etsy. And Etsy you get bonuses like in rankings and everything else if you sign up for their you know, over $35 for all your items, you um, get, you give free shipping for those items. But on eBay, that doesn't really matter. So I, you know, just charge, and you can see the standard shipping was thirty two sixty two. So without taking out the fees and stuff, I sold it for four fifty, which was a really nice profit off of the $30 investment. Over the last month or two, I only had one sale from Cherish, but it was a big one. And it was these two hand-carved Chinese food dogs. This pair of food dogs I actually got from an auction. And I paid with fees and shipping and everything. I paid $102 for. I had them listed for just over $1,400. And somebody offered me $650, obviously, you can see. And I took that. Uh, they're super well-made and in really good condition there were no chips or anything and it's always good too with these i think that adds to the value that when you have two of them instead of just one because most of the time they do come in pairs um, i don't know what kind of stone this was um, but it obviously has like a greenish tint to it when i saw these for auction i was honestly surprised too i think my final bid ended around 70 dollars cherish does take a percentage of that 650 but I think I netted around like 575 or something another good find at an auction I was really happy about that so I also only had one sale on my Ruby Lane store which I'm not exactly sure if I'm gonna keep or not uh, just because it does charge me between 60 and 80 dollars a month you know I have kind of made a little bit or broke even each month but it's just I don't really know if it's been worth it so far i do a lot better on etsy and ebay and cherish i don't know if i'm going to keep this for the rest of the month it depends on if i can make a big sale or not i did sell i got this and 
the item was taken down because it was sold and I can't get to it. I sold this vase and this was a porcelain hand painted vase with a like a brass bottom and it was made by Windward uh, which is Chinese I think it's like early mid-century and I picked this up at a Goodwill off of one of the little carts I walked in and they had some carts sitting there ready to put items out and I love looking at those first because obviously they haven't been on the shelves and no one's been able to see those items yet so I can't tell you how many times I found some awesome pieces just sitting on the cart waiting to be put out on the shelves. That's just a quick tip. Anytime you see those carts out there, check them out and look over and see if there's anything good there. Picked this up for five bucks and sold it for 125. Uh, it was a good find. I really couldn't find a whole lot of things made by Windward. Um, I did find uh, more ornate pair of porcelain vases with brass bottoms they also had more brass i think they might have brass handles too or something but they were priced ridiculously at like two thousand dollars or something i thought this was a fair price well that's all i got for you guys today if you have any questions always leave a comment or you can email me i hope you guys enjoyed the items that i shared and although i didn't share everything i sold those were either the more profitable items that I found and sold or kind of some, you know, different unique things that a lot of people might pass over when they're looking through different things at the thrift store. Hopefully that can help you out when you're out there treasure hunting. I really appreciate you guys watching. Again, like and share this video on Facebook and you'll automatically be entered to win that Steuben glass bowl and get it for free. Just like and share the video on Facebook. And of course, please subscribe on YouTube so you can get updates when I'm posting new videos. Good luck out there treasure hunting and I'll see you in the next video.